Good afternoon. afternoon. Let's get it going. You know, I know you've been working out uh, probably after lunch you had a little uh, previous workout, so you're a little bit warm. So when boxers get ready to, before a fight, they spar and they do the, you know, shadow boxing and they'll move around um, and try to get a sweat up and stretch and do all this stuff. But nobody, nobody has katikatai. Katikatai is an amazing way to warm up. When I was doing drug raids, I'd be running up the steps, banging my arms. On the way, banging my arms. I wouldn't want anybody to see it because they thought it was a little weird. But there's nothing like stimulating over 20 hormones in the body to be triggered to be ready for fight or flight. Okay? So, get a partner. Katikatai. Just warm it up real quick. Katikatai on the arms. Let's go. Let's go. Nothing like katika tai. Just in a sparring position. Now, if you are a wagey rule practitioner, you attack the legs. If you do not attack the legs, you're not a wagey fighter. All right? We go after the legs, so might as well do it under the, the, the hospice of, of katika tai. Now, watch. I want you to keep your eyes uh, on our distance. Watch. Did it change? Watch again. You tell me if my distance changes between his eyes and my eyes. Did it change? But look what happened to my back foot. So this, to change, you do something like this or you do this. His eye picks up, the distance has changed, he is close enough to hurt me. But if I do this and I change my rear foot, my body didn't, but look what I just caught. Try it, back and forth, katika tie. Sparring level, go after the front leg. All right, a combination to work back and forth. I want a front kick to the lower part of the body where it doesn't have any muscle. I want the roundhouse kick either to the head or to the leg, which you just did. And then I want a spinning back kick to the body. So when you throw the spinning back kick, um, you want, when you throw the spinning back kick, your partner's just gonna go wherever that foot was. And I'm hoping that it's rising into the chest, okay? So when you do the front kick, Go low, combination back and forth. Front kick, roundhouse kick, spinning back kick, and he's gonna yield, and then it's our turn. Front kick, roundhouse kick, spinning back kick. Front kick, right here. That's where the wagey front kick goes. No muscle there. Pop it right below the belt. Roundhouse kick can go to the head if you're talented enough, or used to be talented enough. And, and then the spinning back kick. Back and forth, front round spin, go. If your toes aren't facing down, you're not doing a spinning back kick. If your toes are facing sideways, you're doing a half spin, half side. And by the time you get to that position, the spinning back kick would have been already done. So you face your back to your partner, peek over your shoulder, which is the sight picture, and just kick straight back, which makes it rise. If it doesn't rise, then your front kick, your, your spinning back kick, unleashed too early. Wait until you look like Long John Silver. And then when you do, the, the spinning back kick will then rise up into the chest. Ever hit somebody with a spinning back kick into the solar plexus? This is what you hear. Oh! The match is over. Don't have to hit him in the face. The match is over. Green belt, spinning back kick, two down. Where's your front kick? Your knee has to be higher than the target, and the kick has to kind of feel like you're doing this. This way here. <sighs> Up there, all right? This way. This is not a wagey front kick. As you can see, just by that change, how much this guy was moving. And if we had a big face plate, we could probably make him aerial. So your front kick is one up here and two out there. And that's where we kick with our toes. One, two, not this. Here's the best part about it. When somebody throws a front kick and he raises his knee up and everybody knows that Wei Jiu loves to raise their knee up to block the front kick. What happens? The front kick's coming this way. The knee's coming up this way. And how many times you smash your toe when you were white belt or green belt? Raise your hand, you know you did, right? And then you say, I ain't throwing that stupid kick because it hurts. Well, if you're throwing the kick the way we just did, and he raised his knee up, you're going to get, raise your knee up, you're going to get one of these. And you're not going to get one of these because you're clashing in the opposite direction that it's coming up in. So now you're not going to be afraid to throw that front kick, even if he does raise his knee up, because then I'm going to pop him in the shin, or I'm going to pop him in the knee, and I'm not going to clash and break. 
That's the second reason why the front kick should be thrown that way. You're going to be more successful throwing the front kick that way than you are. Try it. On your partner. Be nice. Aka and Sada, long time ago in the 70s, two Japanese people were teaching at the dojo. So Taka, Sada's kicking the bag, and he's driving it like he does with his toes, driving. He used to hit me in the elbow, and I'd hurt. So he's driving the technique in. He's driving the technique in on the bag, and I'm standing there, and Eddie Tetra, one of my brown, the brown belts, was there too, and he goes, uh, Sada, you put your foot through the bag, and I'll buy steak at Christo's. And he just looks at him, and I says, and Sada, I'll buy a new bag. He goes, what? He goes, you buy steak? Yeah. You buy a new bag? Yeah. Whoa! Split the bag about, about eight inches right through the, the canvas of the bag. The bag tilted. He goes, time to eat. <laughs> and that's the way he threw his front kick. He didn't do this because when you're throwing it up, there is a combination of an upward penetration and an outward penetration instead of all this. And again, the block is a lot more effective when you're throwing it that way and not to injure your leg. That's the way you front kick. Now, the front kick roundhouse kick. Um, let's see. Uh, gentlemen, come up here. Throw a roundhouse kick to him and do your wagey block slow. You know the double? Yep. Go ahead. Good. Do it again. Keep that, you should keep that fist tight. Do it again. Everybody see it? Turn around. Switch. Are oh, you throw the other way? Okay. You throw that side. Throw the other way. The other leg, please. Good. Throw it away. That is a Taekwondo kick. Wager kick. Same block. Do it. Did you get hit? Yeah. Do it again. Did you get hit? Yes, sir. And he knew it. Because you people are kicking like a, wheel, a roundhouse kick. This is the way the roundhouse kick goes. Slow, just, just, stay, just hold your block out. Hold your block out, right there. I am going to intentionally go for this target here. And because his forearms are there, I don't care, because two bones against one bone, wagey conditioning, he loses. Even if it is gonna hit that arm. But the PS, the result is, when you kick with your toes, you kick to the body with your toes. So no matter how hard he blocks, he's getting tapped with my toes. My toes are gonna drill into him if I want to. That is not the way you kick, the roundhouse kick that you were seeing before. When you're doing Don Kumite at number five, pride yourself on making sure that you are against a worthy opponent, another black belt in Wei Jidu. He knows what's going on, and he's still getting tapped with those, and you gotta control it because you will hit right into the floating rib. So the target for your roundhouse kick is not out here like he's doing, that they were doing, it's right here. It's right here. And it comes up just like that. Whoa, straight, not like this. Just straight in. Whoa. Try that, number five. Everybody knows Don Kumite number five? Do back and forth, Don Kumite number five, and, and use the roundhouse kick that way. I want to take it out of the Don Kumite because a lot of people in the Don Kumite, when somebody throws a shuto, you throw the shuto and he's going to throw a roundhouse kick, you do this. Well, now you've turned and given the body, um, the roundhouse kick, a lot more time to build up in the crest of his kick because you turn sideways. When somebody throws a roundhouse kick in, in uh, Don Kumite, roundhouse kick, I'm staying right here. Even when they do this, and when I back up, I'm staying right here. I don't block the roundhouse kick like this, all right? That gives it a chance to build up. So now I want you to try the roundhouse kick back and forth from a fighting position. Just from a fighting position, just dot it in that way, either that or underneath the elbow. Try it from a fighting position. You see the blade? He's gonna block that pretty good. Go ahead, block it. Because he's already bladed, block it. Now block it. Yeah. You getting hit? Yeah, yeah sir because I'm taking it on this face and not already where you've been making that mistake in Don Kumite, here. So he's got a lot more distance and gets his body out of the way where if you take it off the front foot and you drive it, it's not gonna happen. So try it off the front part, the front leg of his stance and you'll see it work even more gooder. Go ahead. Most people like the rear too because it's more giddy up with the rear. The target is right there. 
not here because the best block is not to be there and it's very easy when the roundhouse kick comes at that target in the rear to do this and now if you're hitting the shins the toe has a further distance to go to hit but if your target off the rear foot which is a lot stronger because it's going over the center of your body and you fire it there it's going to be a lot harder from him to blade this by the time that kick comes in a lot easier for this one so the target has to be as a wagey practitioner right there from the rear and don't do like you, we were doing everybody else is throwing roundhouse kicks like this it's not a roundhouse kick from a wagey comes right in right in the body there even if he blocks it even with two hands he may be hitting your shin but the toes are driving right into his cage that's the wagey front kick that's the wagey roundhouse kick any questions any what ifs any but how about uh no, it's okay, throw them at me. Really, people, it's extremely successful. And the way that you can really make it successful is you practice it all the time. It's not the thousand kicks you did yesterday, it's the one kick you did a thousand times. And this crescent kick that you're throwing, people are not aware of the roundhouse kick coming up that way. They are not aware of the roundhouse kick. They're always, like we first demonstrated, when they were demonstrated, they're way out here. That's not what you do. Wade Jidu stands like this when they're sparring. They don't stand like this. They're right here, right here. And that target going on the top rear from there, he can't get out of the way of that toe kick. And I'm, I'm really pleased to see the way you guys adapted so quickly to that front kick. It is so much more powerful and it's so hot of the block because it's coming straight at you and not rising up into your body. That's very good. Now, what we want to do, any questions? What we want to do is, when I'm sparring with somebody, I'm, I'm talking about sparring because, um, let's face it, you know, a long time ago, when we all started to take karate, we wanted to take karate because we wanted to be able to protect ourselves. By the time you make black belt, you should be able to protect yourselves. You should be able to be a good fighter. And then you go further by fighting in uh, bare-fisted tournaments, and then you go into professional kickboxing in the ring, and then you go against boxers, and then you go against people that are grapplers. And, and, and then you go into point fighting. And then that's when you don't want to go anymore because the insurance companies are doing the rules and regulations because you need insurance to run a tournament. And if you're having contact to the head, the insurance company is not going to insure you. If you're having takedowns, the insurance company is not going to insure you. If somebody draws blood in a tournament, even if it's a split lip, the person that did it is disqualified. Those are the rules and regulations of the insurance companies. Those are the ones that are dictating the rules and regulations, not us, which was from 1956 all the way up to 1972. In 72, June, we came out with the safety kick and punch pads, and that's what it all changed with. You all seen them, right? Safety kick and punch pad, June, we did it in 1972, they came out and all the rules and regulations was a glorified tap to get a point. And we had no more say into, you know, the really logistics. And God rest his soul, Van Cannon would be standing there and he'd, ref he'd be refereeing this guy would do this. And Van would just be standing, and all the other three judges, point, oh yeah! And Van would be standing like this. Because if you did that, you'd break your hand against that bone. And Van would, and then one day, one of the guys, a, a group of guys was so upset that Van Cannon wasn't calling points because he, there wasn't a point. He was old school. That wasn't a point. They started a fight. The stands come out. How many people were at that tournament? The stands come out. Everybody's in a, it was a Donnybrook and everything because they came, one guy picked up a chair and came after Van because he wasn't calling points. And all the wagey rule people just jumped down on him. But it wasn't Van's fault. One, Van from old school knew that that wasn't an effective technique. And two, the new school didn't accept the fact that Van didn't know what a point was. So when you're, f I'm, I'm not talking about point fighting. I'm talking about something out in the street against a worthy opponent. Do I have to worry about somebody else? No. If I'm working against a worthy opponent, I don't. That's why I don't like to teach self-defense movements. Because if somebody throws a punch, you have to go through a thought process. How many times did you blink your eyes today? Anybody know? Instinctive. That's what happens when you protect yourself. It's instinctive. It's not, okay, if he throws that punch, then you want to do this, do that, and do this. Your body's got to go through a thought process. How good is that going to be under stress? 
After 145 beats per second, cognitive thought is out the window. After 145 beats per second that you are pumped up to do under stress, cognitive thought is out the window. You have to respond instinctively. Front kick punch right down the tubes. Now, when you're sparring, you get in and you get out. You get in, danger, and you get out. That's where all the danger is, right? Getting hit or him hitting you, in, and then get out, right? Okay, I want you to get in and stay in here and fight slow. Now, here's the problem. People are gonna go too fast. You're gonna say, oh yeah, you hit me, I'm gonna hit you back, and all of a sudden we got a Donnybrook on our side. People, we are training. Please consistently go slow. But I want you to stay in the clash. Whatever he does, I want you to defend yourself against it, but stay right here, toe to toe, and block. Sometimes when you see people fighting, watch their eyes. They'll come in on the clash and they'll close their eyes and then come back out. That's how dangerous it is to them. I see a lot of fighters, point fighters, they get in and they go like this, and they close their eyes. No, I want to be aware of the worst part to be in. I want to be comfortable in this spot. Get in this spot and spa. And again, it's going to be difficult to stay slow, but stay slow. Use your knees, use your front kicks, use that kick that I just showed you, because I can throw that kick hand distance, right here. I control that roundhouse kick hand distance. Okay, go. The most important thing in Wei Ji Du is respect. I went to the children's class, you know, the kids are all in there, and you, all, and you get, you get your, your junior black belts and your, and your purple belts and everything, and they're in there, and then you get about four or five new students, and they've been there for like two or three days, two or three classes, and you stand there and say, okay, what's the first thing you learned in karate? And a little kid that thinks he knows everything because he's only been in the school for like three days, three times. Sun chin stepping. Nope. Another kid. Muante turn. Nope. And then he asked the junior black belt, what's the first thing you learned when you came into this dojo? He said, respect. I bowed before I came into the dojo, and that's the first time I'm learning about respect. And then as someone demonstrates on the floor and they're all standing there, respect for your partner. Everybody be quiet while he's being tested for his... And you keep alluding to the fact that number one ingredient for the Wedgie Do system for the world is respect. You want to learn a punch or a kick, you do it slow speed and break it down. When you get a thought process that goes by your head like that and you say, oh, it's deja vu, oh, I was just thinking of him. Oh, it's nature's way of telling you something. Try to stay on the thought. Don't just let it go away. Go back or stay on it because it is trying to tell you something. There is 60% of the brain, they don't know what it's for. Guy, uh, a little while ago, I said, Guy, Tony Jordan, I'm thinking of Tony Jordan, he's gonna come in the dojo. I haven't seen this kid in 15 years, one of my best junior fighters, was New England Grand Champion in the junior division. And Guy I says, I don't know why I'm thinking of him, he's probably gonna walk in the door. And Guy goes, you know, okay, swear to God, half hour later I'm teaching a class and in comes Tony Jordan. Haven't seen him in 15 years. And I turned to Guy, because he's the only one who been with me long enough to know it, and I said, Guy, just go over there and ask so you'll know I'm telling the truth. Go ask Tony if we had any conversation within the last 15 years. And what did he say? No. no. Driving down the car on a Porsche, God rest his soul, Gordon Azak. Gordon Azak's driving down a Porsche, we're down on the Cape, we're on the Cape Road, and he's firing it up. More like that. And I said, Gordon, slow down. He would do it frequently. Gordon, slow down. Why? Why? What's, I don't know. I just don't feel right. Just slow down. He slows way down, come around the curve, and there's a cop with a radar. And he looks at me like, how the hell did you know that? I, said, I don't know. It just came upon me, and I nurtured it and said, it's nature's way of telling me something's wrong. People, you have the ability to do that. What you don't have is the introduction to let you know, one, you have it, two, now I'm telling you, to stay on it longer and longer, because it is telling you something's going to come, or it's a foreshadow. It's the same as going slow with a physical activity. To make it better, slow with a thought process and break it down. Match is over. It's over. Get some room. Would you please demonstrate for me 
the highest comfortable copter that you know, not the one you're working on, round belts, the highest kata in the wagey curriculum that you know and know strong, would you please do it second speed? Would you please put power in front of speed? Slow it down more. Nobody disputes a wagey do strong kata. Nobody that is watching you perform your kata will dispute a strong kata, all right? Too fast, you look like a gerbil on speed, all right? Slow and powerful. Form is always more important than speed. Form is always more important than power. Power is more important than speed right now, okay? Here we go. Your highest form, I'm going to be seeing some some say you do. Enjoy. How's it been? Power. Power. Sir, yes, sir. I love it. Bow. Where'd you do? Half hard and half soft. I love it. I'm watching. Crash, bang, tiger, 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 crane. The whole mystique of the whole kata was dropped way down, and it looked like water coming out of a hole. Still strong, still fluent, but you stopped everything and put in more soft than hard. And we do that sometimes. We have too much hard than we do soft. Where'd you do? Pong Gay Noon, half hard, half soft. But I love it when you come to the crane kata, the parts of the crane kata in Sun Seidu, and you slow it way down. And everybody's going, what the hell happened to his tempo? But it was, I'm trying to show you that this is from the crane. And then, like Seidu, Seidu, right? You get into there and you do the front kick, boom, and then, and then all of a sudden, every, the whole pace, like beats to a music, one beat to each measure, one beat to each measure, one beat, and then all of a sudden, four beats to this measure. And that is incredible. You have to have a character to your kata, your character. And you put that character in your kata. There's nothing worse in the 60s that you're sitting down there as a black belt and everybody's doing say san. And they bow, and here it comes again, one after the other. Dun, dun, dun. And then all of a sudden, you get this kid that turns around and does what you people were doing here. He breaks it up, and he shows the difference between an intense tiger and a crane and, a, and the breathing of the, ti uh, the dragon. And all of a sudden, everybody wakes up, and you'll see the change, especially if they're all way you. You'll see the change. You know? So do it. I just want to make one correction. Everybody come down into your hot stance. Go. Elbow strike, go. Again, elbow strike on your hand. Go. Go. No. Go. No. No, no, no. No. Grab me. I want to throw elbow strike. That's what you guys are doing. Elbow strike. Punch. And then unleash. This is your elbow strike. It does not go this way. We're in wage. If you need a question answered, go to Sun Chin. Where in Sun Chin does your elbow do that? Does it? Why would it do it in an elbow strike? All you have to do is touch that elbow here when it's coming out. It's not coming out anymore. This is your elbow strike. Sun Chin, when the elbow passes the body, turn. When the elbow passes the body, and now you're not going to get limited penetration. When I do this, I guarantee you, every time you throw the elbow strike, it'll be past the center of your body, which means I'm penetrating through with the elbow strike and not trying to do something like this. Now, I want you to try it again and be careful because it hurts. Down. 
Go. And then unleash it. <laughs> Tip of the elbow hits the center of the hand. That hand's going to hurt. Tip of the elbow, center of the hand. Very good. Heels together. Anigashimoshi. Thank you.